Hello and welcome to Draw with Igloo. This is the very first Draw with Igloo. I'll be drawing things I like the look of in Adobe Illustrator. Hopefully you can follow along at home with Adobe Illustrator or in this case, even if you don't have Illustrator, pen and paper and you can just draw some of these crewmates or characters with me. You've been watching a sped up version of me illustrating a section of the one of the Among Us maps. Um, let's get started. We're going to draw a crewmate and maybe later we'll move on to some imposters and dead bodies. Um, here are a couple of characters here um, that I've just set up, a little Santa one as well. I'm just going to move down to a new artboard. If you are following along in Illustrator, then your artboard, if you want to follow exactly, is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. Um, I've got a few little different characters on here. I'm going to start with just the standard crewmate. It's a very simple shape. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing tutorials using the rounded rectangle tool. Um, which does get you very accurate shapes, but you end up having something that looks more like a minion than than a, a character from Among Us. It needs to have the imperfections, it needs to have the curved lines and, and things like that. So let's get started. We're gonna use the pen tool. Um, I'm just, for starters, I'm just gonna draw a simple line. I'm gonna get it to a black stroke and we're just gonna up that stroke weight until it looks about right. They're quite heavy, the um, the outlines. Something around 13 pixels looks about right. So now, once I've done that, I can delete it, because then the pen tool will remember what I've just done. Um, if you prefer to see a little pen or the cross hairs, it's up to you, just press um, caps lock. Um, so let's start up at the top, and we're just gonna draw, click and draw a simple outline. As you click and hold, you can get these anchor points with nice curves on them as we come down to the feet. We can always edit what happens later on. But if you can't see those pink lines, by the way, as well, they're called smart guides. Just go up to view and smart guides. Also have snapped a point on. They're two good ones to have. This point we're gonna go across and just leave it there. So I'm gonna command click off there. I'm gonna sort that square end out there. But for now I can select this stroke and I can go to stroke over here. Cap, I want a rounded cap. And corners, I want round joint. Now we can see these don't look exactly smooth. So with direct select, we can just select this. We can move these handles to where we want them until it looks about right. That looks nice and smooth. So then we're gonna go back to the pen tool and start on the other leg, come down a little bit. This one's got a fairly sharp point to the front of it. it goes up a little bit, out for a little belly, and in a little bit just under the, the mask. I'm going to leave this one open at the top, and we're going to start drawing the, um, the visor, so we're going to start over here. Start with a curve. And the good thing about Illustrator, when you close it up, you'll see the circle appear. Once you've done this, you can, with Illustrator, you can actually press Alt and change these corner points, these handles, um, until you're happy. You can direct select, move them around, make this corner quite sharp. This one needs to be more rounded, so just press P and Alt, and you can round it off. If anything, it might be a bit too high, make it a bit shorter, and something like that looks good. Then we can then select this anchor point here with A, and just drag it in so it overlaps. And then press P, go back to your pen tool. Once you go up to this active line here, you'll see the anchor and a slash appear. So just click there, and that means we're now anchored back onto that point. So we just want two lines here, a little one there, and a little one going into there. Probably came a bit too far forward with that one, so move that one back, move that back. I think we might need to soften that up, so again, hold Alt 
after you've hit P and just soften that one up. That looks about right. If anything, it might be a little bit too thin. So with direct select, we can always select the anchor points on this side and just move them over a tiny touch. If we don't want our legs to be too thick, we can do that. But that looks about right. We're going to draw the backpack. Start somewhere like here. Go out, slight curve, down, slight curve, and in. That might just need to come in a tiny touch. Maybe that needs to go out. But that looks about right. Okay, so from this point, we're going to select everything with V and go up to Objects and Expand. Fill and Stroke, click OK. And you can see it's taken it from a stroke to fill shapes. If you can't see Pathfinder, go up to Windows and down to Pathfinder. And we're going to Unite. So then we've if I just undo that, you see all these overlapping shapes and we unite it, it just becomes one shape. That means when we zoom in, we can select individual anchor points like this one here. And we can use the round corner just to round that off a bit. Same with this one in here, just a tiny little rounding off makes it look a little bit nicer. We're going to go down to this point here because what we want to do is get rid of, get rid of this. Move these in a touch to about there, press P we're going to get rid of these anchor points here and hold alt and click that one. That means we've got rid of everything. So what we can do is select that anchor point by itself with A, just round it off a little bit, maybe drag it out a little bit more, press P, we'll add in the anchor point, hold alt. I'm just going to round this off a little bit, see what that looks like. Just make sure this anchor point's nice and rounded. There we go. Maybe even add in one on here so it doesn't look quite as flat just like that that's good there we go so it looks good now we're going to color him in uh, a few different ways to do this but i found the easiest way to do it is again just use the pen tool and click over these big black lines the good thing about this is if you hold alt you can just click that so it gets rid of that extra handle you can go super fast here and just basically create the block colors. This red is a CMYK color, uh, 100 magenta, 100 yellow, and 21 black. Once you've done it over the top, you can just hold command and the left square bracket will just send it back on. It's a really good trick to uh, to learn. Uh, we'll start somewhere up here, sort of curves around quite close to the edge, around to about there, down to his belly and over. And then just go around these black lines nice and quick. Probably take you the same amount of time if you're using a pen and paper. But And then just that command left square bracket, send it back one. And we're nearly there now. So just roughly over this shape. And we're going to make this just the full brightest red we can. So 100 magenta, 100 yellow. Again, pop it back one. And the last sort of shape we're going to do over here and this might need to go back a couple and then for the mask we're going to do the sort of dark teal color first around to here I'll tell you the teal value in a second I'm going to color drop with I this bit these are your values here if you want to just hit pause you got 83 45 38 11 and then we're going to send that back, command left square bracket. And just quickly draw in this shape here. And the light blue is, again, those values there. If you want to hit pause and copy those values, we'll just send this back to. And then we're going to select a white shape. And we're going to draw the little reflection in the visor. Uh, that looks a bit right. Maybe make it a bit bigger, a bit fatter, a bit deeper. But that looks decent. And then the last element is just the shadow he stands on. So you use the ellipse tool and you just draw a little ellipse underneath it. I'm color dropping this gray over here. I've actually made the gray a little bit transparent. You can see, you can see through it. So on the transparency, it's around 58%. 
I'm going to send this one to the back, holding Command Shift and the left square bracket. It just means when you place it on top of a background, you can see through the background slightly. It just makes it a bit more realistic of him actually being on there rather than just floating above it. So back to our character. He looks pretty good. You can again mess around with these once you've got the basic shapes. If you want to make him a give him a knife and making him an imposter, and again you're just drawing those shapes with the pen tool. Um, I need to send that back one so we can see the curve. There we go. We can now see the curve in it. But once you've got this, if you select it all and press Command G, that's grouped it together. So once it's grouped together. You can select it with V and just hold Alt, and you'll see the cursors change to double ones, and then you can drag them across. And if I then zoom in a bit closer and select the reds, I'm going to select the reds and hold Shift and select these four red shapes here. If I go up to Object, sorry, Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork, I'll just move this over to one side. As long as this um, chain link's on, you can then move the colors around wherever you want and you can have whatever color character or something quite goldy let's see if we can make a gold character there we go and just click off that um i hope that was useful i hope you've enjoyed drawing along with me um please like and subscribe and i'll see you again next time